This is the manifestation of Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama is manifesting in United States. Ashwatthama didn't stop there. Krishna did not curse him with death. He said, I curse you with immortality. You must be with this guilt for always. This is uh, something you need to understand. So when he cursed Ashwatthama also, he means the same thing. For those of you who don't understand the question, she's talking about Ashwatthama. At the end of the war, a terrible war, that everybody on both sides were disgusted with themselves and everybody for having perpetuated such a war. After killing nearly hundred thousand people in those days when the population was not even ten percent of what it's today. Ashwatthama didn't stop there, out of his anger, he went out and killed children who were sleeping. Children were sleeping and he went and slit all their throats as revenge for what he felt was unfair, maybe unfair, but this is what he did. So Krishna did not curse him with death, he said, I curse you with immortality. You must be with this guilt for always. So what is the consequence of that? I think they are all… Ashwatthama is manifesting in United States, killing all the children in schools. Yeah, he is here. Otherwise, why do you want to walk into your school and kill children of all the people? You could at least choose grown-ups. I'm not saying it's better, but I'm saying it's… Uh, this is the manifestation of Ashwatthama, because you're angry with something, you go and kill children who are sleeping. So, uh, this is something you need to understand, because the moment you have little money and comfort, you want to live forever. But that's the worst thing that can ever happen to you, that you cannot die. Yes. Hello? I want you to just imagine, you are sitting here after a million years, I am gone, everybody's gone, but uh, you are still sitting here. It's a worst thing, isn't it? <laughs> you also die in time, maybe you want to die after me, I agree, but <laughs> you also die one day is a good thing. You cannot die, it's a terrible thing, isn't it? So he cursed him with the most terrible thing. He said, you must always live this guilt. So you need to understand when Krishna speaks even about himself, when he says, me, 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 he's not talking about him as a person, he's talking about him as a quality, him as a consciousness. So when he cursed Ashwatthama also, he means the same thing. It is not that that guy is going to live forever. Says, those who do this kind of an act, out of something that you're angry about, resentful about, you go on children who are sleeping, you go and kill children who are sleeping. Such people must suffer always because there are many things among human beings. When a war happens, you kill. It should not happen, he tried everything possible to see that it doesn't happen. Once it happened, he said, better fight. You can't go to the battlefield and say, I won't fight. You should not go to battlefield. Once you go there, you got to fight. So he said, fight. They fought, everybody killed each other, so many people died. Great heroes fell, good people died, bad people died, all kinds of people died. When it's over, you go and kill children. Such a man should suffer for always, that is the curse. Because there are some things which are not good, but you still do because you're caught in situations. This is after the situation is over, because you've lost. If you had won the war, you wouldn't have done it. Because you lost the war and you're full of resentment, 
you go and kill the children. That's not that you must suffer for always. The immortality is not for the man, but for the suffering that it causes within you. You may do it, you may take another life, but you go through an enormous amount of suffering. That must continue for you always, that's what he's saying. Because uh, this is the nature of life. There are many things we can do, but if you unscrew certain things, <laughs> then important things will collapse. That's what he's trying to say. They all of us have fought the battle, we've killed, we've done many things, we've cheated each other a little bit, done all kinds of things. But still it's a man's world, when the war is over, you step back, somebody won, somebody lost. Step back from that because it's over. No, now I go in the night and kill the children, your children who are sleeping. They were not protected because nobody imagined somebody will come and chill, kill children in their sleep. Otherwise, they would have put soldiers around. They did not put because they thought, who will kill the children? War is over. So, uh, if you become overly resentful, overly suspicious, you will end up doing such things. Namaskaram. The video discusses the story of Ashwatthama, who was cursed with immortality by Krishna for his heinous action during the war. Ashwatthama, out of anger, killed sleeping children as revenge, leading Krishna to curse him with eternal life to live with guilt. The consequences of immortality are explored with the idea that living forever with guilt is a terrible fate. The concept of Krishna's curse as a reflected a consciousness and a quality, rather than literally immortality, is highlighted. The video delves into the deeper meaning behind the curse and the implications of living with eternal guilt. Today, we are delving into the fascinating and tragic story of Ashwatthama, a legendary warrior from the Indian epic, the Mahabharata. Ashwatthama's tale is one of incredible power, devastating revenge and eternal suffering. Ashwatthama was born to Guru Dronacharya, the esteemed teacher of the Pandavas and Kauravas, and his wife Kripi. His birth was marked by a celestial announcement that he could become a great warrior. Ashwatthama had a unique gem embedded in his forehead, granting him extraordinary powers, including invincibility and immunity from hunger, thirst and fatigue. From an young age, Ashwatthama trained under his father's guidance, mastering various weapons and learning the art of warfare. He was destined to be a great warrior, a fact that was evident in his exceptional skills and determination. As the Kurukshetra war approached, the Ashwatthama aligned himself with the Kauravas, led by his close friend Duryodhana. Throughout the war, Ashwatthama proved to be a formidable warrior, participating in many key battles and demonstrating his powers on the battlefield. One of Ashwatthama's most notable moment was his use of the Narayanastra a divine weapon that could unleash destruction to entire armies. However, the Pandavas with the strategic guidance of Lord Krishna managed to counter this powerful weapon, showcasing the delicate balance of power and strategy in the war. A pivotal moment in Ashwatthama's life came with the death of his father, Dronacharya. The Pandavas, knowing they could not defeat Dronacharya through conventional means, resorted to clever but deceitful tactics. They spread the false news that Ashwatthama, the warrior, had died. When Dronacharya heard this from the truthful Yudhishthira, he was overcome with grief and laid down his arms. In his vulnerable state, he was killed by Drishtadyumna, the commander of the Pandava forces. 
Ashwatthama was devastated by his father's death, consumed by grief and anger. He owed to avenge his father's death, setting the stage for his tragic downfall. In the death of knight Ashwatthama, along with uh, Kripacharya and Kitwarma, launched a surprise attack on the Pandava camp, driven by rage and desire for revenge. Ashwatthama killed Draupadi's five sons, mistaking them for the Pandavas. This act of revenge was against the rule of war and considered a heinous crime. When Ashwatthama realized his mistake, it was too late. The news of the massacre spread and the Pandavas were horrified by the loss of their sons. Draupadi, heartbroken and furious, demanded justice for the murder of her children. The Pandavas captured Ashwatthama and brought him before Draupadi and Lord Krishna. Draupadi in her brief demanded that Ashwatthama be punished. Krishna, known for his wisdom and compassion, decided not to kill Ashwatthama but to punish him in a different way. Krishna removed the gem from Ashwatthama's forehead, stripping him of his powers and cursing him the wander the earth for 3000 years, suffering from an unhealable wound. This curse was a fate worse than death, condemning Ashwatthama to a life of perpetual pain and loneliness. Ashwatthama's curse led to a life of eternal suffering. Legend says he still roams the earth, bearing the burden of his action and seeking redemption. Sightings of Ashwatthama are part of folklore in various parts of India, where he is said to appear as a haunting figure with a festering wound to his forehead. His story was fascinated people for generations making him one of the most intriguing characters in Indian mythology. Ashwatthama's eternal suffering is a poignant reminder of the consequence of unchecked anger and revenge. Ashwatthama's story teaches us important lessons. Ethics in warfare, even in times of war, there are rules and ethics that must be followed. Ashwatthama's violation of these rules led to his downfall. Consequence of anger and revenge. Ashwatthama's uncontrolled anger and desire for revenge resulted in tragic consequences, not only for himself but for many others. Divine justice. His fate underscored the belief in divine justice, where every action has consequences and moral transgressions are met with appropriate retribution, redemption, and forgiveness. While Ashwatthama's actions were unforgivable, his eternal suffering also speaks to themes of redemption and the possibilities of astonishment, even if it takes a long time. Ashwatthama's legacy continues to be relevant in discussion about morality, ethics, and the human condition. His story is a reminder of the fine line between heroism and tragedy, and the enduring quest for redemption. Finally, Sadhguru is taking rest in USA. Watch this video to know more details. If you enjoyed this story, please like, share and subscribe for more fascinating tales from Indian mythology. Let us know in the comments what other stories you would like to hear. Thank you for watching. Pranam.